All right, so guys, of course, uh, I'm excited for this debate. Uh, my hope for this was to be more of a very rough uh, kind of freeform thing. Uh, as a you know moderator here, for the most part, I, I think my main job is just getting you guys together. Um, and you know, at, at any point if I step in, it's you know basically going to be to try to ask a guiding question just if i think this might be some way more productive if you guys want to stay on whatever line you're on just say so and i'll I'll shut up um and also just like you know kind of i i i don't think it's any issue with disability both you guys have been on here multiple times you guys have been great um and really you know i the only thing i can imagine is i guess time fairness like you know so so but i mean just you guys you like you know Try to be respectful, like, you know, let the other person have a, you know, don't go on too long. Let them have a, you know, something that they can actually respond to. And really, ideally, um, the way I'm envisioning this is that I'll shut up and you guys can go at it for about two hours. Does that sound good for you guys? <laughs> yeah, man, sounds great. <laughs> I'm sure we can fill the void just fine. I conducted myself <laughs> civilly with Stefan Molyneux, so I'm pretty sure I can handle myself with just about everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yes that was very well done so um yeah the for anyone you know just hopping in here the topic of the debate here is the morality of capitalism um don't want to put words in either mouths but i am pretty sure that adam believes that capitalism itself is a moral system and that vosh believes it is not is that correct uh, yes. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I think that capitalism is preferable to certain other economic systems, but I do believe that at this point there are clear and obvious um, alternatives that would be more moral. Okay. Um, just for clarity here, I'm not trying to like the you know, opinion or anything like this. Like, but you would say that capitalism is immoral, right? Not just like you know, there's a better option, but it is itself immoral. Correct. I, I try to avoid using really like hard binary language like that because everything is relative to something else you know um even like for example like a like a, a like a shitty parent is probably preferable to living on the street uh, i i would say that at this point in time the decision to stick with capitalism is an immoral one um be because there is there are obvious ways in which we can improve on that system to deliver a better outcome okay um, so may I take a take a stab at an opening statement of definitions? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I am first and foremost a voluntarist. I believe then that all human relations should be voluntary, free of force, fraud, and coercion. This is the foundation of libertarian ethics, and this is what I would define as a concept of morality, a unified theory of ethics, based on the idea that as an independent consciousness in your own physical vessel you own yourself and therefore it is wrong to initiate force against you through force or or fraud or or aggression or violence or, or coercion or anything of that nature that deprives you of the rights incumbent with that self-ownership and the definition of capitalism that i would use here is basically concurrent with that because the definition of capitalism from a textbook is an economic system based on ownership of the means of production. And this gets generally misrepresented by misdefining the means of production with a focus on industrial resources as opposed to the ultimate means of production, which is the individual human being, the individual mind and body capable of creating value that is measured not in widgets or in dollars, but in human happiness and quality of life. And so within this framework where I would say that capitalism is this overarching system, which is the only ethical system that anything, uh, capitalism, as, as I'm defining it here, describes a state of ethics. If a society is unethical, it means that someone's rights are being violated, which means their self-ownership is being violated, which means that a proper capitalist system of full ownership of the means of production is not being respected. So within that framework of voluntarism as capitalism, you could have a system 
that looks like something else. You could, and, 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 and I use this in my messaging even now, running for president on the localization platform of dissolving the federal government, that if you want, uh, and, and I go to the extremes with this, so forgive the little sidebar here, but you know, if, you, if you're, uh, you know, for me as someone of Jewish descent, you know, Jews will not replace us is viscerally disturbing. But if there are people in this country who want an ethno state and they form it on private property voluntarily, they don't hold anybody captive and they don't force it on anybody else, as disgusting as I think that is, I want them to have that right. This is the modern equivalent of, uh, I disagree with what you have to say, but I will fight for your to, to the death for your right to say it. And I'll, on the flip side, if you're a gun grabbing socialist who wants to live in a nudist commune in the woods, as long as you're not forcing it on anybody else, I want you to have that right too. I wouldn't live in either place. And if you say, well, we're not, we're, we're forming it voluntarily, but we're gonna call it socialism. I, 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 my, my take on that is like, well, if you're doing it ethically, if you're doing it with respect for self ownership, ownership, technically that falls under my definition of capitalism. But if you wanna call that socialism, that's fine. And I would say that anything that violates that ethical premise is is what uh, we're going to be debating today. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah, so um, I'll try to address as much of that as I can with, I guess, my own opening statement. So, um, surprise, surprise, I'm a libertarian too. I'm a libertarian socialist. Libertarianism's ideological roots can be found largely in the product of leftist thinkers, after all, because it was leftists who originally concerned themselves with the idea of human emancipation. I place a very high priority on human liberty, the ability for people to act independent of coercion, uh, with full autonomy to prevent them from being uh, stimmied or withheld by institutions more powerful than them. Um, I do think that on a fundamental level, human beings are all equal. I mean, sure, we vary in individual ways but in a principal moral sense we are all equal and i look upon systems which divide and place into hierarchies human beings with great suspicion um i believe that capitalism is such a system i think that capitalism by way of its internal economic mechanisms effectively necessitates a hierarchy that exists between those who own the means of production and those who do not there are other smaller less consequential hierarchies the difference for example between a poor man and a rich man but in the most egregious one of all is without a doubt the difference between those who control your labor and those who must sell their labor to survive that's the issue that i take primarily i don't like the uh i don't like framing self-ownership in literal terms for example i wouldn't be comfortable with the idea of a human being selling themselves into slavery if you own yourself it follows logically that you can do anything with yourself if you want it's your property and you can if you want sell a piece of your property to another person without any expectation of getting it back but i think there's something different about a human being about consciousness and about self-actualization um that means ownership can't really apply um consequentially to what we describe as sort of a human experience. So ultimately my contention would be this, a person who believes in freedom, a person who believes in egalitarianism, a, hum a person who believes in the right for human beings to operate independent of outside external forces influencing their life, often to a negative extent, um, these people should believe in socialism because only through socialism can we destroy the class divide that imposes that hierarchy upon us. Oh, man. I don't know where to start there. But, it's all right. We've got all the time in the world. Into, yeah, no, we can get into th this being a, a matter of market preferences and, and definitions. But I, I think what I want to get at first, then, is, is your definition of capitalism. Because mm -hmm. I, I think you skipped that. Oh, yeah. Well, I define capitalism. I think I use a pretty standard definition as an economic system where individuals have the legal right to own um, property and produce capital as they would. It doesn't have to come from like the patrician of a state. Um, and what's more, um, that uh, property rights are defended by the state um, to ensure the ability for the individual to control private property. That's what I consider to be capitalism. Of course, there are different types. Mercantile capitalism existed before the uh, Industrial Revolution, and that was mostly done Well, by... hold on, hold on. As, as, as a libertarian who understands the, the, the connection of voluntarism and anarchism, wouldn't you consider the existence of the state a violation of capitalism? That if there is a monopoly on even property protection services, 
that that you don't have a market in that area and so it's, it's at least uh, uh partially occluded capitalism when you have a state enforcing property rights which is not what i would advocate for and something i would say would be unethical because that state represents a coercive monopoly well two points to that for one no capitalism requires a state because only a central authority can defend property rights after all if we didn't have okay, a state hold to turn... on, no, that's uh okay see, well, no, well, okay, wait, see wait, that, wait second so that, second point as well. That, well, well, well wait wait it's okay <laughs> write it down i just want to say the second thing as well yeah and secondly, <laughs> you take notes. even if that was the case, uh, uh, that the absence of a state bolstered capitalism, which I don't believe to be the case, I would say the abolition of the state in our society, I am an anarchist, I don't like states, but the abolition of uh, our state in the society in which we exist now would not bring about positive outcomes. It would be highly destructive. Okay, you said the, that only a state can defend property rights. And I, I think that just flies in the face of observable reality where individuals uh, d defend property rights by assertion, by consensus, by mutual respect, by social standards, and by private physical defenses, as we would describe it today, in, in, in so many ways that are actually more effective than government. I mean, why do you not go around stealing stuff, even as someone who, who, not you personally, but you know, like why would someone who might be tempted by desperation or greed or whatever to go around and steal stuff, not do it? it government is not an effective deterrent on any kind of large scale to prevent that theft. And, and government itself is, I think you would agree, largely, a, and, and, and I would say by definition, a mechanism of theft. So, why would you say that it, it, if, if defending property rights is a virtuous thing, as I would if, if you include in that certainly self-ownership and, and civil rights, then you know, why would you want the state to, to have the monopoly or why would you say that the state is the best mechanism of achieving that? So a few points there. I don't like framing the idea that what the government does is theft because theft is fundamentally a legal definition. By definition, like stuff like taxation cannot be theft because theft okay, is so something which is then? described. Oh, it's a it's a system of wealth expropriation, but theft is a specific legal definition. I think it's a little bit reductive to describe any time any resource changes hand from one group to another as a form of theft. Um, but with regards to no, no. But if it if it changes if it changes coercively if it's taken. So you said it's appropriation then uh, uh, what would be your umbrella term? Because I think most libertarians say theft includes robbery and fraud and appropriation and, and, and extortion, that, that all of those things are, are under the umbrella term theft. What's your umbrella well, term? Well, we, we do consent to being taxed. Um, the, um, there are things that we can do if we don't want to be taxed, mm. but I would use the term appropriation, generally speaking. I don't think you consent to be taxed if, in the exercise of your natural rights. Wait, something sure. is Wait. taken from you. Yeah, you do. You could just leave the country. Oh, so I can't, or, or secede? Am I allowed to, I mean, I know under your world, I'd be allowed to secede, right? Well, there wouldn't be a state in my world, so I, I mean, I don't know okay. if there'd be anything to secede from, but I mean, if you want, you can leave the country, or if you really want, um, you don't get taxed if you don't have an income. Uh, if you want, you can just live off welfare. You don't have to... Um, uh, you don't have to do anything that gets you taxed by the government. I think if you have a right to do something and there is someone saying you can't do that without giving us money, you, your your rights are being held hostage. And that would be a form of, I don't know if you want to say your legal definition, but certainly an umbrella term of that. So you're arguing that if there are basic things we should have access to, um, but if they're like kind of paywalled or we have to like lose money or resources to get to them, it's unethical. I, I didn't follow all those definitions, but I think, yes. Well, the, you... the, it, like if I have, oh. if I have a right to trade with my neighbor and the government says, you know, well, you, or, or, or I have a right to, to start a business and sell something that I've produced and the government says, well, you can do that, but you have to give us 10% of your profit. 
then my right is being violated. That that something that I am entitled to as the fruit of my labor is being stolen from. Okay, then this is something that we can completely agree on because right now, in order to live a decent life, every person in this country has to work at a job, and that job expropriates labor from them through their uh, surplus value. That's how companies make profit. So I agree fundamentally. Capitalism you just said is unethical. people could. You just said people could live on. You just said people could live on welfare. Well, people can live on welfare. So if you take contention with my argument, you also have to take contention with the mechanisms of capitalism. In both cases, well, people can, if they want, just live some subsistence lifestyle, but the higher so, order pleasures of life are gated behind a higher power, a corporation or a state, expropriating from you. So you are defining capitalism as state capitalism. And I'm defining capitalism as an anarcho-capitalist or a voluntarist would define capitalism. Nothing that I've described and, wouldn't also apply in your ideal world. Well, in, in my ideal, ideal world, there would be no coercive or government-based mechanisms of, of property rights enforcement. And it what about would, corporate, largely wouldn't be what necessary. About corporate elements? So, but, but here's, here's, here's where we are, are looking at the same problem. To, to your immediate question, corporate elements. What you say about you have to work a job where your laborers are expropriated in order to maintain a decent quality of life. I mean, in, 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 first of all, in the sense that you say you can opt out with, with welfare, certainly that's one way where you just blew a hole in your own argument. But then, you know, for myself, Wait, for example, how am I blowing you know, a hole I, in my I, own argument? I, you said you have to work to have a decent living, whereas just a, a minute before that, you said you, you could opt out and, and live off welfare. No, I, I, I'm sorry. I Let me clarify. My argument just demolishes your idea. You're making the argument that it's unethical for the government to tax you, uh, even though you could avoid those taxes by living a subsistence lifestyle. I'm saying the exact same thing for corporations. Corporations expropriate your labor, and the only way to not live a subsistence lifestyle is to work for said corporation. In both cases, a higher power, a corporation or a state, gatekeeps the, the pleasures of life behind your subservience to them. In either case, you're being cucked by something infinitely more powerful than you. No individual can stand up to a state. No individual can stand up to a corporation. But in both instances, it is through their exploitation that you are able to access many of the higher pleasures of life. That's the case whether or not a state is backing up the private property rights of a capitalist society or not. Ah, here we get to the crux of things then, because I would say this is a byproduct of the state being a coercive managerial agent in the economy. That corporatism that you describe, that our inability to compete as individuals, to have our labor as contribution to the economy properly valued, is an obvious product of the corporatism that we are living under today, where corporations have special powers, where individuals are disadvantaged, where a small business is at a disadvantage to compete with a big business every time. So in banking a... interests and loan mechanisms create consolidations of wealth and power that are completely unnatural and that in a flattened capitalist market without this gross concentration of wealth and power that is primarily centered around the phenomena of central banks, obviously backed up by government policy and coercion and tax systems and all of that, you would have the ability to compete and to, as an individual, have your labor properly valued such that all Wait, of the why? problems you're Wait, pointing at with the current system go away. This is the same fairy tale that I have told to me by every libertarian, that somehow the state is like making everything worse you're a and libertarian. if we just took away the state. I'm a libertarian socialist. <laughs> I recognize capitalism right. is also oppressive. You take a look at one hierarchy and say you don't like it, and then take a look at another one and say you actually quite do like it. I'm opposed no, because, to all forms because, of hierarchy. No, because state, state capitalism creates unnatural hierarchies. State, your definition, your concept of capitalism does that. What I'm defining capitalism as doesn't do that at all. Yeah, I'd, but again, this has never been tested empirically, and there is no theory backing this up. Why exactly, in a world without a state that still has a capitalist society, would people suddenly be free from all of the implicit coercion inherent to a capitalist society? How exactly, and we didn't even get to this, how exactly because do you back up private no property rights without a state? No, no, there is coercion, because you still have to work to survive. Unless you're saying there's a robust UBI and no incentive whatsoever to work in an ANCAP state, or ANCAP society? 
No, of course you would not have a UBI. Right, then you have to work. And in order in to work and survive, you have to submit yourself to the will of an autocratic organization. Businesses are not democracies. You work there and you that's obey. That's not necessarily true. No, that's not necessarily true. Because in a, in, a, in a world where there is no state-granted property right or corporatist or, or policy or banking system-based, advantages your labor as an individual is valued equally to everybody else's that's part of the Why? problem of the distortion wait. of the current system no, where wait, you as no, an wait. independent contractor you as an independent contractor can compete without being part of a bigger system okay wait help me out because barter you can engage in trade for goods every and time services. every time i you talk can do, you, okay. can do, you can live off the land and, and create your own business like what i'm doing right now you just create your you own business and then other people have to work for that business every time i talk to an ancap like they fall back on the same fairy tale about how like if we just got rid of the same fundamental principles of societal governance that have been working for thousands of years suddenly everything will fall into place explain this Hold to me. On. Wait, wait, really else, quickly just I, has, I, hold on. No one I else, want this explained to no me like individually to, no, no 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 i have to i have to examine one of your your premises here no one else has to work for me i, I have a shop in a shipping container where i can make uh, geodesic dome frames so just and everybody I can send them to people Okay. And I can have a one-man business, and I can live very well if I want. Like so that. everybody just Trading creates their own business. Directly. The, the 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 problem is that if if I want to enjoy the synergist synergistic extra value uh, of coming together with with other people, whether it's you know through well, I mean in a sense with my business I already am like I got I get raw material I get conduit from hardware stores and nuts and bolts through a uh, mail order. And, you know, I put those components together and, and I create, uh, you know, a product that's a geodesic dome frame that All I right. can sell on so the So wait, internet. let's, wait, so, let's, let's take that, wait, 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 let's take this from a base level, okay? So on a fundamental level, in a capitalist society, you need to work to survive. Let's take the life of an average person, okay? Let's say you're born into a sort of well-off family, or let's just say middle class. In well, an hold, hold on a second. Hold wait, on, wait, wait, hold I on. have to lay out premises before we can even discuss this. Nature? What? Right. I'm, I, is, when you say have to work, do you mean have to work for someone else? or do? Well, how would you extend this to like hunter-gatherer society? Your you labor say, has to be to sold. Work to survive? You have In order to make money, you have to sell your labor. Whether or not you have your own business or you're working for somebody else's, you have to sell your own labor, unless you own uh, the labor of other people. Would you guys mind if I jumped in real quick? So I... I, I know where you're going with this, Fosh, and I, I just want to direct this in a way that I think might help make things more clear with the arguments here. Um, Vosh, like I, I think you touched on this loosely, but maybe you could do it more directly. Um, could you describe how you define coercion and then how the capitalist system is implicitly coercive? Yeah. I think that would help us get where we're... Yeah, well, go ahead. Yeah, of course. Capitalism is implicitly, well, I haven't even gotten to like the broader problems with capitalism because we're still focused on like the definition of coercion, but coercion is, is, is any instance in which an individual um, is compelled to act in a certain way due to forces um, that, that in, in, in some way like leverage um, uh, um, like stakes over them. So for example, in a capitalist society, you do have to work or you have to own labor in order for you to be able to make money. And money is the tool that you use to live a fulfilling life. Uh, it's very difficult to live a fulfilling life with no money whatsoever. You could be Diogenes and jerk off in a barrel on the street all you want, but the cops are eventually going to show up and take you away. Money is kind of the baseline for existence in a capitalist society. The majority of people in this country right now are born into a certain economic class, and then they die in that same economic class. There's not a tremendous amount of class mobility. And what I'm curious about is how exactly this would change in a society without a state. Because, and this is what bothers me when I talk about this, it seems fantastical. There isn't any theory or any pragmatic demonstration of a state's removal serving to the benefit of the humans in that area. Well, usually when states fail and stop exerting law over their citizenry, we call that a failed state, and they're usually in a state of perpetual civil war. These are usually not enviable conditions. What it seems to me in an anarcho-capitalist society is that we would return fundamentally to feudalism. Um, we've seen this happen 
happened before during the competing shogunates back during Japanese uh, the Japanese feudal era, where dozens of clans uh, would would just organize their own economic and military forces, and people who live in a given area are completely subservient to the lords that own their respective castles and fortifications. This isn't entirely dissimilar to what would happen in an anarcho capitalist society, and I'm really really curious what mechanisms make capitalism less coercive without a state acting as an intermediary force between you and businesses. So I'm shocked to hear your commitment to money and materialism because I, I, I mean, I, I, I don't live in aesthetic lifestyle, but I, I really do disagree with your focus on money and materialism. This is a pivot. We're not this. addressing the question. No, no, no. I'll, I'll, I'm going to get to it though. But I, 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 to me, it's it's ethics is 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 more of a prime, you know, a primary nature here. And we say there's never been an incidence of of removing the state. You know, we could make analogies about cancer and say there's never been an, an evidence, you know, of of cancer being good for a, a human body. And it, this this would be you know a better way of looking at government to say that the the introduction of coercion takes us away from this uh, ideal state of creation of value and everything that you're saying that is you know an ill of of capitalism it really comes down to this difference in definitions where you define capitalism as as the, this thing that is backed up by the state. And I mean, I really want to go back to this. This premise every criticism of levying continues to exist with no state. Every criticism, what? Every criticism I'm levying here continues to exist in the society you're proposing without a state. That's what I'm asking you. Why would the absence of a state no. make capitalism less coercive? Because capitalism, capitalism is by definition not coercive in the way that but i am defining that's not, it. that's not an, wait, wait, you can't just definition your way out of that question if a person no, right no, now no, this is no no but this is it no no but this is it no this is this is again the heart of our difference of definitions is that this I'm isn't a definitional difference you're not system, answering the question well no because i'm including in my definition of, of capitalism that you own yourself the, the ownership of a human that's, being that's irrelevant is, this is this is the, this is the tautological circle talking that libertarians engage in to avoid dealing with the real world repercussions of their arguments so let's talk about it right now in our society which is market oriented if you don't like using the term capitalist there are exploitative forces on the average person they have to do certain things so they don't get to enjoy a certain quality of life they're forced into doing some things how would this change in an ancap society that's life you have to do wait stuff wait wait wait, wait, wait. so your stuff. argument is that there like, is just going to be exploitation no matter what you're not saying it wouldn't be no, exploitative not, no 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 hold on no no see now you're changing the question you didn't use the word it the way you phrase it was not with the word exploitation Coercion. you said that you're going to have to you're going to have to work or you said you're going to have to work to enjoy a quality of life yeah that's how life works okay i think sure. okay wait wait, wait. Can, so yeah so you have to pay taxes hold on to, to enjoy quality seeking, of life. But rent seeking is a product of government. Being able to work or being able to get value without putting in effort or value is a product of, is, is this rent seeking concept that is a product of statism. That is okay, the then, then taxes of, are just of, a part of, of life. If, if you want there to be basic necessities that everyone can enjoy, taxes are just a part of life. You need to fund those somehow. They get taken if you decide well, to work. Well, sure, it. but there's a better way. Yeah, but there's a better way than that. Like we can have a voluntary system that achieves How the same things without all those perversions. How would that system not impose coercive measures on the workers of its society? Wait, wait, I just, I'm saying a voluntary system. If it's voluntary, where's the coercion? Like, are you oh implying God. some other okay. definition wait, let me, of wait, coercion let me, here? Let me, ask you a very, let me ask you a basic question, okay? Let's say that you are on a plane, and that plane crash lands on an island, okay? Um, there are only a few survivors. In fact, there are only two. And you wake up after the first one does. By the time that you have woken okay. up, the other survivor in this plane has claimed all of the coconuts on all of the coconut trees, stacked them on their pile, sheltered that pile with all the wreckage from okay. the plane, and declared sure. they own it. And they say that they would be willing to give you said coconuts if you throat their cock. Now, would you no, consider okay. no, that no, to be so a that's... voluntary interaction? <laughs> Is that a voluntary interaction? Okay. 
Okay, so so no, I'm for I'm actually people. no, the, the, no, that's a that's no, Vash, thank thank you for that. That's a that's a great way of of getting to the next fundamental. I think misunderstanding here in terms of a definition of property rights, and but, I think but you have to answer one the question you before you can move on. I, I'm I'm gonna get to the coconuts and the deep throating. Don't worry. But it's yes, no. But I just want to know you, the question answer, and then you can. Would that be ethical? Point. No, it would be unethical. It would okay. be. Un I'll say then. Uh, if the question is, would that be an ethical situation, or would that be coercive? Would it be voluntary? Yes, it would be coercive. Well, it would be based on an illegitimate property rights claim, and this is really an essential thing that I'll I'll grant you. A lot of libertarians do miss this. So would it be voluntary? Right? And part, so. Would it would it be a voluntary no, exchange? That would would no no because it is an illegitimate claim to property rights. The same way okay. that the state creates a territorial monopoly on authority. What's a legitimate so claim if, to if property you, rights? Mixing your labor with natural resources in the locking instance. If it ha if it, it is something that has your labor in it that you have claimed by you know homesteading or or modifying with your labor. And here's the thing. Wait, that but he homesteaded that island. Will miss. Hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on a second. I'm going to get to that. I'm going to get to that because because I think this is a really underexamined topic among libertarians, and I would hope that hearing my perspective on this might bring you back to a a, a, a an, an understanding of property rights that gives you more confidence in voluntarism. Right now, property outside of your body. And even inside of your body, unfortunately, under our, our current government considering forced vaccinations, it is a matter of social consent, right? How much labor can you mix with the soil? And how much is required for you to make it yours, right? And if I put up a fence around a million acres and say, everything in here is mine because I put up a fence around it, I mix my labor, you'd be like, mm, no, uh, bullshit. I, I don't think so. That's not, no, you can't just put up a fence around it and claim it. But here in northern Arizona, I bought 11 acres and I put up a fence around it and I'm using it. And generally speaking, society respects that as an illegitimate or as a legitimate individual claim to natural resources because okay. I'm able to, to put it to use. I'm able to I'm able to, to to actually create value with this. But if it were to be abandoned, then it would go back into its unclaimed state. Now, one of the other things here about use of property, a lot of people ask libertarians, you know, but who will build the roads? And the question, as, as you know, isn't so much who's actually going to build them, but how do we manage shared property? How do we manage infrastructure of a, a, a geographical nature? And here it's really simple. We have setbacks and easements, and you can't build all the way up to the edge of your property in a way that would uh, impede your neighbor's access to their property. Now, here, this consensus of, hey, you don't build within 30 uh, We are going so far off. Wait, can we take no, this no, one no, time? This gets to pro no, this gets to property rights. So you when, when you, I'll, I told you I was getting to the coconuts and the, and the deep throating. Don't worry. So if, if this is my legitimate claim here and I'm not using my property to limit another human being's right, and this is an inherent right, that a lot of libertarians don't adequately consider is that you have a right to equitable access to natural resources, to homestead unused property. And that being respected would mean that if two people are on an island, there is an incumbent right to equitable access. And one person can't say, I own the entire thing and push the other, use that as an excuse to push the other person off the island. All right. So do you then have an issue with, um, the idea of owning multiple businesses because you can't possibly work at any one business at any given point in time. I own multiple businesses. I own. Wait, do you work big personally at geodesics? All I own big igloo geodesics, and I own Adam versus the Man, and I own the Freedom Line. Okay, and yes, I work. I work personally. In all do you think? Do you think it's ethical for a businessman to own multiple businesses where they don't actually contribute to the labor of? all or even any of those businesses it was an investment move in and of itself in and of itself no but as we know that as an example in modern society Wait, you, ju you just said it's not legitimate evocation of property rights for somebody to lay claim to property that they don't personally use and contribute labor to 
No, they can also trade. Uh, they're legitimately acquired natural property. You can you can engage in wait. How is it legitimately acquired? Well. They just they just bought it, so it's okay to just like buy huge tracts of land in businesses, even if you don't use it personally. No, in the case of land, there's a there needs to be in, in an anarcho capitalist society or a true capitalist society, or even with a volunteer system of government or localization. There, there would be a standard of, of what is a respected uh, claim to ownership. And if you're claiming land and simply using coercion to sequester it, that would be unethical. And that's I, generally I don't know what you mean by I don't know what you mean by like a legitimate acquisition. Unethical property claim. I don't know what you mean by like a legitimate trade. acquisition of of property rights. Like so on the island example okay, so like the person wait 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 in the island in the island example I apple for an orange I legitimately acquired Okay wait 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 orange. yes I understand that basic, libertarianism basic makes sense if you reduce it to econ 101 questions but I'm talking about how this would work in the real world. In the island example that person the person who collected all of the coconuts used their labor to collect all of it. Are you saying stuff like land and food should be decommodified and should be equally accessible to the entire population? No, I'm saying that we should allow the market to produce a natural consensus for what is a legitimate claim to property Wait, 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 rights. wait, wait, that's, wait, that, that's we'll weaseling something... out of the question. You can't just appeal to consensus. What if the consensus of the market is fuck poor people? What if we just buy up all the property and rent it back to them at extor exorbitant rates, which is what currently happens? What if that's what the market like agrees upon in an ANCAP society? Well, in a sense, what we're talking about could be by that sense all a product of the market, whatever the current paradigm is, whether it's through voluntary means or through government, if we consent or demand a government that that's what we're going to get. And yeah, what you're pointing out is exactly a product of the current paradigm. And it's because people generally don't care. I mean, a, a big part of what I'm advocating for is a, a, a greater respect for the individual human being for that right to individual self ownership. And that that basic appeal to ethics primarily of you know, something that applies to every individual and either well, way, you're, both you're not answering, you're not answering the question again. Market. You're again, you're not answering the question. So are you saying that these goods, fundamental human necessities like food and uh, 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 housing and stuff, should this be decommodified or you're just saying leave it to the market? Because again, then I ask you, what if the market decides it's more profitable to be incredibly exploitative and charge people money, which they can only make by making themselves subservient to another person's authority or by starting their own business in order for them to access those right. goods? Right. I'd say that's where we are now. But w would you? No, could, no, could would you, you have to answer the question? You can't just then? keep saying every bad thing right, that right, happens right on. now would hey, be fixed hey, if we hey. had no state. Could you? I'm. I'm. In. In. Understand your question. Can you explain how you're using the term decommodified? Decommodify in the sense that it's not tied to market forces and everyone is guaranteed it like a ration, basically. In the sense that uh, I would say yes for land. I would say the individual right to equitable access to natural resources, primarily in land and air and water, that that, that be, uh, that, that, that I guess in, in the sort of, I, I'm not sure, I haven't considered it in these terms. But in that sense, it'd be decommodified from where it is now in the sense that people have property right claims uh, based on government certificates of land holding that are entirely illegitimate. And, and society should say that those are illegitimate and uh, allow in individuals to homestead or to claim that land. And in doing so, open up a huge amount of economic opportunity for so many people in so many other ways. Okay. And so, in, yeah, in a way that the... if that individual access to land were respected, what you could end up with in the market is a kind of land-based, uh, I hate to use the term UBI, but, you know, for what we, we, we do, do, do you want an allowance or do you want wealth to live off of? I think if everybody's claim to equitable natural resources, land in particular, were respected, that we would have much better systems where people could have passive income. I mean, if you're arguing for the decommodification of basic human necessities like water, food, and housing, then I'm completely in favor of this. Now, you realize that not, this is not, something... No, hold on. Not food, and, not food and housing, just the natural resources that are the elements of that. So land and air and water and, you know, access to... to trees and natural plants and, and all of that that is the this basic is, human right foundation yes okay but and this is nonsensical create, it's you can't so, wait, housing for that. so you can just take land and trees and air what if what if you need like food like does everyone need to build their own garden and like slaughter their own livestock in order for them to be able to su survive 
Well, obviously not. In a system that I'm advocating, we can have incredibly complex systems of interaction and voluntary hierarchies. I'm not against voluntary hierarchies. And like, like I was getting back with my dome example, you know, and, and I, I do have people I'm working with here on an, on an under the table basis, obviously, you know, and I'm just getting this business started. So I'm talking about it like it's an established thing. It's, it's not really, but it still serves as a good example here. So if, if I want to trade my labor, uh, you know, in, in making domes and, and custom building domes, I can do it here. But under the current system of, of corporatism, if I want to do it on a bigger scale, if I want to have employees, if I want to have a facility, if I want to have corporate accounts with, you know, mail companies, things like that. I mean, for now, it's okay. I'm, I'm going to keep running my business sort of underground. But there are limitations that, that are imposed with that that disadvantage me. And if you get rid of the corporatist policies, I would be more able, I would be, the, those, the disincentives that, keep me from creating an above board business okay. and having greater synergy and cooperation. Okay, I, 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 okay. Uh, I, I, don't, I, I don't, I don't care help. about how government regulations hurt the small business owner. I'm really talking about like large, broad. I care about effect. that. I understand. But how about we get back to the actual thing that we're discussing? Um, so my fundamental. Well, so you, you, so, you accuse, you accuse me of, the, of being divorced from the real world. I'm giving you personal business examples. No, my my concern is making and road building examples, and you're saying get back to the my concern because because you just wander off. But I'm trying I'm trying to bring us back. So on a fundamental I'm level, because grounded in the real world. Okay, so on a fundamental level, all right. I like to build a society that works out best for the greatest number of people possible. I like that's what I consider to be an ethical society, Likewise. one which maximizes well-being. So you've just said. So I've explained that there are ways in which um, the the uh, the uh, the the deference of all resources to the forces of the market with no state interference can harm people. And you have made concessions, or I guess not necessarily concessions, if you believe in this, um, that there are certain things to which humans have a default right. Um, that everyone should be able to like engage fundamentally with some basic countenances of the earth, so that they aren't completely left to the whim of the business. I, we still haven't right, gotten I, back. It, to the very, to natural resources. Right, we still haven't gotten back to the very first question that I asked, though, which is, if I'm just a regular dude in an ANCAP society, how is my mm -hmm. need to pay for shit to survive any less exploitative or coercive than sucking a person's dick for coconuts? Well... That's like saying that nature coerces the first guy by saying, if you want coconuts, you have to go gather them. You, you, this is going back to this. I mean, you raise this weird problem of, well, you have to work to get stuff. Like, yeah, that's that's life. Like, how are wait, you? That's, how wait, is that's not it. So, so, so you agree the coercive elements of capitalism could, <clears throat> of capitalism would continue to exist even without a state. Because earlier you said that's not the case. You said it was the state that prevented people from being able to fairly negotiate their wages. But now you're conceding so here, and saying here, that even here, without yeah. a state. So here, right. So here you're, you're, in, you're imposing a, I have to say, false definition of coercion. Where if, if you if, if want to do business with me, you, you have to give me a resume. I'm not coercing you to give me a resume. You choose to do that. Yeah, you choose to suck you know, the guy's and, dick and, for coconuts. What do you mean? You choose to suck their dick. He doesn't have a gun. He doesn't force you. He doesn't hit you. You choose to suck your dick. You get down on your own knees. You unhinge your own jaw. You do the tongue work. That's your choice. That's voluntary. It's not voluntary if you're accepting his illegitimate claim to property in the first place. I, don't, I think all of these are illegitimate claims to property. I'm a socialist. But you're, I don't you're like saying, private property. You're, right. You're saying, so you're saying that it's... Okay. What was the phrasing you used? That, that you have to work in order to enjoy basic quality of life stuff, right? That, that yeah, you could live, you could live off the land in your own land and, and fish in the stream, but if not you everyone want can do that. A like, laptop, right? We live if in an right, industrialized wanna, society. If, we, like, right, and if you want an iPhone, right, so your point is if you want an iPhone and a laptop, you have to get a job. No, no, if you want money, to live, right? especially in an ANCAP society, okay, unless there's like a live. robust okay, so UBI. Want, okay, so, so if you want food and shelter, I'll, I'll give you that. So if you want food and shelter, 
you, you, you have to, you have to work for it. Food, shelter, right? entertainment, um, self-actualization, education, literally everything is gatekept behind money, like at a higher level in our society and would continue to be in your society, except apparently for access to like air, trees and land and water. Um, so how would, right. how would that so change? Because, because, because all of, okay, because then all of those other things would be, would be far more abundant overall, but how do you escape that in your society other than by saying we're going to create a system of, of coercive welfare how are you going to el eliminate this basic fact of life that, yeah, if you want stuff, you have to do stuff to get it? Because I don't think it's coercive to tax people. I think that taxing people is a necessary prerequisite to live in a civilized society. That some of the fundamental institutional and infrastructural things we take for granted literally cannot exist without taxation. I do believe that society can exist without, um, without the exploitation inherent to uh, capitalist uh, uh, wage negotiation. And as a socialist, I'm trying to abolish the forms of exploitation that I think hurt people the most. I don't think that taxing people who have enough money to live so everyone can have roads, clean water, access to education, I don't think that's a bad thing. I do think uh, enabling a system which allows a cabal of incredibly elite oligarchs to make as much money as they want off other people's labor because the average person has no way to negotiate their wage with a much more powerful institution, that to me is very, very bad. And I ask you again, what in an ANCAP society would prevent people from being subject to the exact same coercive forces that a current modern day middle class worker does? Okay, I, I'm gonna come back to your question because I think first I have an opportunity to bridge the divide here. And that I think you would agree that uh, if, if someone, if, if you're gonna live in a society with taxation, that, that people would have the right to to secede to create a new system right that they don't have to be part of that similar system that you believe in that fluidity of, of borders of government that if communities want to create their own system that they they should have that right yeah well i think that i believe in democracy i think people should be able to fight for systems they believe in but i'll advocate for the one that i think is most ethical whether or not people like it no, no, no. Let me, let me put it to you this way. Like, so if, if California votes to secede, you would want the federal government to respect California's right to be an independent nation, right? No, I don't give a fuck about states' rights over federal rights. No, it's the individuals in that territory say we don't want to be part of this bigger system anymore. Yeah, I don't really believe in people's right to uh, secede from the government. I don't think there's generally like positive outcomes associated with that. Um, if you could, I mean, if you could make like a really good claim, like maybe mm. there's some like an ethnic group in California okay. that's being genocided and they want to cut themselves off from and float off into the Pacific, then maybe sure. But it's something that like it'd be like a very extreme resort. Okay, see, this is where I think the disgusting central planner nature of your worldview is revealed because I would not force somebody into a system without their consent. I believe in consent. Consensual relationships are essential to a good society, to, uh, to quality of life. If, if you remove consent from people and you say you have to be a part of the system, then they're being forced into something against their will. I reject that on its face. And if you say that there's gonna be a tax in the system, I can work my head around it and say, if you can figure out a way for it to be voluntary, if there's a way that people can opt out and create their own system, if you have a right to be sovereign on your own land or for your community to be separate. But what you're saying is that because these lines are drawn on the map, we're going to force you to be a part of a centralized system based on your view of what a tax system should be. I'm okay with there being systems that people call a tax. You know, if it's by a voluntary system, a voluntary association, if it's for a community. This is why I advocate localization that governments get down to the community level because a community is Wait, voluntary. What, about? what you're advocating what you're advocating for is a rigid system where people in California is not allowed to secede. What do we, wait, wait, because I don't care about the state of Cal, wait, I don't a, care about the state of California. No, what are we talking about? Yeah, you said the people, you said you don't care about the people either. Wait, it depends on why the people want to leave. To I said, secede. wait, yeah, I right. said if there's so a human rights yeah, reason so that, to but secede. You're saying, right, but you're saying they don't get to decide for themselves what that reason is. Wait, you're yeah, saying you wait, get to wait, decide. yeah, I believe in laws. Yes. Uh, and now, now, wait, 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 hold, wait, wait, wait. Let me cl let me minority. clarify something because because you've been wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You've been so you've been so boxing for like fifteen for minutes. Reason. So let me clarify one thing, okay? In an anarchist society, this long? is 
This is obviously not applicable because there would be no state. Anyone could do anything they want with regards to secession in an anarchist society because there's no state to secede from. I don't care about that. In our current society, right now, I don't think there's good legal or, or moral justification. Society. What? Or a voluntary society. I don't, there's no such thing as a voluntary society. Your society certainly isn't one because you still have the implicit coercion of capitalism. I don't know what exactly you're referring to. And by the way, you said you were going to answer my question, but you've pivoted away from it for the 18th time to talk about secession. How would a person living in an ANCAP society not be subject to the exact same coercive pressures a worker is in this society? If you define coercive as you have to do stuff to get stuff, they would be. You have to cooperate with other people to have a society. You have to do stuff to get stuff. You have to have a society. Yes, I'm not rejecting Right, so that. you have to work to live. Yeah. Same. And I don't, I, don't, I, don't think your, I don't think your system, uh, you know, except for shifting that burden around and making it worse for everybody, really – avoids that basic concept wait, I, mean, wait, even wait, if I don't have an, i don't have an welfare. issue i don't have an issue with work i have an issue with two fundamental things a the hierarchy between uh the people who own the means of production and the people who have to work there and b the fact that you have to work to survive that's a very big difference if you're arguing that there's a social like need to prioritize people working yeah of course people need to work like we, ne okay, we need to keep so the lights on. i don't have a problem i don't have a problem with the concept that you have to work to survive, I guess. Okay, that, so that, you that's, believe that's in just, order I mean, to not yeah, die, some people, you some, have yeah, to submit yourself be... to the authority of a capital owner. That's coercive. No, no, you could garden, you could live off grid, you could live in a city. You're still oh, yeah, working. sure. And on the island, in the plants. island, you could just fish. You still have to collect the coconuts. Yeah, yeah, you still have to No, fish no, you don't. Wait, wait, wait. You don't have to collect the coconuts. If you want on the island, you can just walk off into the water and wait for the little, little fishies to gather around your feet and try to scoop them up. Right. Okay. But if you want the coconuts, you have so to you suck still... that guy's dick. <laughs> you still have. All right. Uh, I don't know. Why what, what, you what, you realize what you're the, arguing the, here, the, right? I'm trying to. Sugar. I'm trying to draw an equivocacy here between the fundamental coercion of the aforementioned coconut dick sucking and of having to work in a society where all the means of production are already controlled by people much more powerful than you, infinitely more powerful than you. And your answer to this is, oh, well, you could just live off the land or form your own business. Okay, but can no, everyone I... do that? There are eight billion people on this planet. Fundamentally, this you're... is a system that requires most people submit to a hierarchy. To exist within a See, hierarchy, yeah. to be forced to to survive. Oh is coercive there is coercion there is exploitation in telling a person you will work for us or you will die you don't even get to control your own labor you don't get to sell it equitably you don't get to decide uh, how it is used you work for your local landlord you work for your local feudal lord or you fucking die that's the system that you're advocating for and you can call that system a lot of things but voluntary is not one of them no, see, this is where you're using a deliberately confused definition of coercion in order to make an appeal to emotion to say that's a that, really funny way of not that, answering that, my that, question for like the 20th time so far in this conversation. I, I answer. I answered your question the last time I said, yeah, my system is going to maintain this basic fact of reality. That no, 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 no. This, co this if coercion. If you want to eat a fish, you got to go catch a fish. If you want to have a society, you have to work with other people. If you want a modern industrial wait, you, wait, wait, you're society, wait, you're pivoting again. You have to create systems. You're wait, 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 whoa, whoa, okay, whoa, so whoa, statist. Wait, are you a, are you a statist? You're arguing that hierarchy and exploitation are necessary prerequisites for a society to function. I thought I was talking to an no, ANCAP. No, organization. No organization. Voluntary hierarchy, hierarchy. and organization. Is, is it voluntary to sure. suck the coconut man's dick? We've already been over this. You keep pivoting over and trying no, to use definitions it's, that it's are no all, longer it's, relevant. It's yeah. If, if 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 I mean if if the guy with the coconuts takes one of those coconuts and he makes a pina colada for you and gets you drunk and you want to suck his dick for another pina colada, yeah, that's that's a fair exchange. I don't have a problem with that. Wait, wait, wait. okay, wait, wait. So so let so let's be really clear. I don't know why you've like changed the analogy here. If you crash land on the aforementioned island and you have two options, okay? There's the coconut for one. That's great. Um, but if there's a coconut man, okay, and they have all the coconuts, you can either suck their dick to live, or you can take a bet and hope you can fish well enough to survive even with all the coconuts gone. You're saying this is a fine, equitable, decent societal form of organization. 
No, because there there should be. I mean, you're saying if in your your new hypothetical, you show up on an island and there's a coconut man, and like he what he's got three coconuts, and those are the only coconuts on the island. So he's got twenty. Maybe there were a lot of coconuts. I don't know. Okay, so he's got all right. So he's got twenty coconuts, and and I think we're both getting that. How do we create a consistent societal framework that says he should share? Right? Like that's kind of bullshit, right? And and to me. The answer is equitable access to natural resources. Wait, but you can't, like, get, you can't get around you know, that. You can't wait. You can't get around that because the analogy that I'm using is meant to explain how there's not fundamentally any voluntary effort when you sell your labor to survive to a corporation. You can argue people have the right to homestead, but this doesn't really apply when we're talking about working for a modern industrial industry. In the modern industrial world, you, and especially in your society, you would have to work or die. Working means selling your labor to another because death is the because there is literally a gun pointed to your head. You know, libertarians talk all the time about like jackbooted thugs from the state coming with a gun to your head to take away like a percentage of your taxes. You will literally die unless you sell your labor. That is not voluntary. That's coercive. Okay, so so then stop evading my question and tell you how, how tell me how you've magically solved this problem and that taxation creates a magical fount of value that means we can live well and nobody has to work. It work becomes option. I would love to, yeah. So I don't actually think taxation is the way towards a prosperous society. It can provide some good things, like roads and schools, and I believe in that. But I'm a market socialist, fundamentally, a libertarian socialist. I believe that there are forms of the market that are actually very effective and functional at meeting human needs. The problem, fundamentally, isn't the existence of the market with regards to how it treats human beings. The problem is the fact that those markets are owned by oligarchs, people who could privately own the means of production i believe every yeah, business should be owned that's a product of the state well i i know they people they say that but that's just factually wrong every society that hasn't had an overarching state authority to maintain like a consistent um and singular monopoly on on violence has always devolved into warlords so with that being said right, um, so monarchies so well, there have been worse forms of totalitarian government. Well, I'm, I mean, I'm not advocating monarchies. for a monarchy here. That's why I'm advocating against you. I think you're a fun functionally a feudalist. Um, but with regards to me, I, my issue isn't necessarily with the businesses. My issue is the fact that they're owned by one guy or by a collection of guys. I want them to be owned collectively by everyone who works there. That way, people own the means of production that they produce. They have control over the way in which their labor is used. And what's more, they have a stake in the system that they need in order to survive. This would, of course, be used with a robust... UBI or social welfare system to make sure that the disabled or people who can't work or can't sell their labor or people who are just feeling really bad that day um, can survive. But fundamentally, that's the change that I want to make. Abolish the hierarchy by flattening it. That's the real flat capitalism right there, making sure everyone collectively owns the means of production. So I think that in what I'm advocating, there would actually be a huge shift in that direction. And it's really just a matter of how we get there. I think if you, and, and, and here I do see an opportunity to bridge the gap because what I'm describing of, of, of localizing government control would actually get you the ability to create those economic systems at a community level where communities want that. Property can be reclaimed in the process of localization by communities that have been, as, as you have rightly pointed out, been enforced uh, unfairly by the state. Okay, how would the means of production be abolished in an ANCAP society? It wouldn't. Okay, that's what I want, though. That's not evading your question. That's answering your question, okay? Uh, no, no, I appreciate the answer. Just like, we don't want the same thing then. Your society would still maintain these this feudal hierarchy of, of warlords and, and, and you know, uh, rent seekers over the serfs. It's funny because in feudalism, you know, serfs were guaranteed the exact thing you're advocating for. Homesteading, no, access no. to the so, land. No, 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 no. So all of that, all of that would be... Uh, but so, like, if... We get government down, let's say we get rid of the federal government, we get rid of state governments, we get it down to the county county governments, and now a corporation that, that owns an auto company or an, an auto plant even in your town says, you know, we're based in New York, but we own this plant in Detroit. If Detroit goes independent, they can say, you know what? Fuck you. Fuck your illegitimate property claim. The people in this town built this. We're reclaiming it. And people here are going to create, a, you know, a new system. Of so you do have an issue with you do have an issue so, with business owners owning multiple businesses. Then, 
No, it's not multiple businesses. It's having an unjust claim to those but what, rights. Wait, like what, said, what, does that, what does it mean, businesses. unjust? Like, what does that mean? Backed up by the coercion of the state as opposed to the consent of society. Okay, so wait. What, so what if you have one businessman in an ANCAP society who owns like 40% of all the auto production in this country and every single manager of all the individual auto plants all wants to maintain that hierarchy because they get a fuck ton of money um, paid down to them by that owner? Is this an illegitimate yeah, system of acquisition? That, so, no, but that if that wouldn't happen in the first place. Wait, it's now, here's it where happens we get right to, now. It's right, right now based happening. On, right. No, right, not based, based upon the state. No, 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 not yes, based on the state. It's all based on the dollar. It's all based on federal This happened before it's modern capitalism. This happened before modern capitalism. This happened during there the feudal was, days. You, there was always, right, there was always a state or a monarchy. No, no, even in stateless societies, even in Japan, back when there was no Where emperor and no shogun. Where have there been stateless shogunate. societies? When have there been, because this is the most, now I want to I mean, know, Somalia this, is the big meme right now. Look look at feudal right, Japan. Exactly, for, exactly, other than Somalia. For, for centuries, wait, wait, listen, I'm giving you an example. For centuries, okay. feudal Japan had no central emperor or no central shogunate. For centuries, it was broken up into dozens of different clans, all of whom acted as independent feudal lords of the small areas over which they had control. With no central uh, monopolization on violence, there was constant fighting and warfare. The serfs had absolutely no power and no way to leverage it. Um, their authority, which they had none of, against um, their lords. Without any monopoly on violence, those um, those um, warlords had like full right to do whatever they want within their own territory. This has happened before. Without a state, things don't just instantly become voluntary and non-coercive. Those, 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 those were just Wait, small then, then states corporations are states. states. Then, then how are corporations not states? Well, a corporation is an entity that is created by government with special economic privileges. That's okay, what then, what, then what would you call a business in an ANCAP society? just a business okay then why happen. then businesses become the new state a, a business owns everything in a town they buy out everything they can put their workers in those businesses so it's a legitimate acquisition of property and then they own that town how is that not a state that just becomes if, a new government if it's if it's a system that comes out of consent and people want Wait, that, that no you system. can't no you can't who circumnavigate it oh so if people you? want to no. live in a state who are you right yeah, yeah, exactly. Who are you to prevent? So, like I said at the beginning, if wait. People so, if people want, want to live in a state, know, a it's right to live in a state. Or an if it's if it's one that is formed voluntarily and they that consent doesn't mean to anything. Yes, do they consent? Absolutely. Okay, wait, wait. Then here's the question: Why do you advocate for what you if do? It's the people, the people have clearly it's, said yes, they want to live I'm in a state. I'm advocating for consent. If people, right, and I'm saying that they should be able to have separate states based on their preferences so that government can become customized and transparent and accountable and eventually voluntary when the individual rights is how is their consent in every business in your town being bought out by a billionaire who you've never seen or talked with in your entire life can they just vote so that person and not these, have any of those businesses these, like big like emotional these are very simple no questions. these aren't emotional these are very simple questions what? that illustrate how childlike your you're, ideology well, you're is. interrupting and you're raising your voice so obviously you're getting emotional to a certain degree here but when you're saying how is there not consent? Well, for, I mean, you're, you're you're raising all of these complex false premises, like a, a billionaire. You just said it's consensual. How is it consensual? The state, if everybody in the system consents. To Wait, what does that mean system, to consent? So everyone says, consensual. so everyone says, woohoo, we're okay with Walmart Incorporated owning every business in our town. Right. If everybody in that town says that, then who would? Who are you in the next town over? To, to use force to stop them. Wait, I'm, wait who, I don't know what you're talking about the next way. town over. So what if the people in that town don't like that? What if they actually don't like the fact that all their shit um, is owned by like Walmart Incorporated? What if more than 50% of the then, town doesn't like that? Well, then it, there wouldn't be consent. Okay, so, so then what happens to those businesses? Then they're not owned by Walmart? No, well, well, no, they still the are. They're still place. staffed by people on the payroll of Walmart. So what happens to them? Do we go in, like, militarily? Do we, like, bust down the doors? Do we, like, swat, like, hey, we're reclaiming this for the people? Do we seize them? What happens? Who, who do they go to? Uh, actually, it, in, in a small sense, yes. And again, I think here's, here is a, a, a bridging of the gap. You know, I'm friends with a lot of libertarian socialists in the Libertarian Party, and I very much respect that they are not advocating for taxation. They are advocating for voluntary forms of socialism. 
And with my plan for the VA, for example, you know, I'm, I'm a veteran myself with healthcare through the, the VA hospital uh, here in Arizona. And you know, veteran suicides is, is one of my big issues. I was given a handful of suicide pills when I, I went in and told them I was having trouble sleeping. And obviously, I think I think we would agree that the drug war is a disaster, right? You want to yeah, but what does that have to do with what I asked? Right? Hold on, hold on. Because, well, uh, it's a bit of a sidebar, but I'll come back to it. So, with the VA, what I want to see is the VA privatized and given to every single veteran in this country through an electronic voting system, where every veteran gets one ownership voting share. So, put the VA in the hands of veterans. And when I talked about this as privatizing, because to me, that's a direct individual ownership based on membership in a community that has a claim to a resource. Uh, my friend James Weeks, actually, who you probably know as the fat naked dancing guy from the 2016 Libertarian National Convention, said that's socializing. And so, yes, at some point, I do believe that in localization, we can have a peaceful process of reclaiming some of the most egregious, illegitimate property rights claims created by government. Okay. So how would you how would you then take back that property of Walmart's? I think a community could take over control and issue shares to everybody in that community if they wanted to. So what if a large enough a community? What if a large enough community decided that they didn't like the fact that businesses had control over basically every aspect of their industrial life, and they decided to collectively yeah. form a sort of central government that they would then use to, if you want to do business within our territory, you have to abide by our laws. And it slowly spreads That's to fine, replace yeah. the space of the continental United States, and then we just have America again. That, that, I, that would, I would, hypothetically, I don't think, I think it's unrealistic that it would go that way based on your premises, but I hypothetically, ethically would not have a problem with that. But as you sweep through Arizona, can I stay sovereign on my own land? Can every, does every individual have that choice? Uh, if so, then cool. You know, and, and that's, that's really what I want to see. by your see community. Is, that's fine. What I, like, so I want to see a transition to that level of fluidity of government where the key basis is consent do you uh, is the system being forced on you if it's not being forced on you i want people to create whatever systems they want okay so here's my follow-up question if you believe it's just for a community to engage in retributive action against businesses that they feel don't have a legitimate claim to their stakes within a town how exactly mm -hmm. do you make sure that those people are able to appropriate their property? Walmart is very wealthy. They have security. They probably have a private army in your sure. society. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Well, okay. So, um, what, what was the term used there? Repropriate, like uh, yeah, to reclaim. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's you know, but you said retributive or or something more. Uh, I'm sorry. What word did you? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Like retributive. Like, like how, how do you how do you get that property back? Is that what the word was? Yeah, I okay. think so. Yeah. So it's it's it's. It, I I don't think it's retributive if I'm using the word correctly to say, sorry, the system by which you have a claim to this property is not legitimate, and we are reclaiming it for the people. In what this if they community. disagree? What if they say it is and legitimate? So, right, right, right. So. It, in order to exist, Walmart has to have the consent of every community in which it exists in, in terms of people shopping there. No, they, wait, if no, they don't. people stop shopping there... Wait, feudal, feudal lords they, were hated by their serfs, but they still owned everything, so you had to buy through them. What do you mean? You don't have to like a business to right. buy from them. You form natural monopolies to keep people from having any alternatives. Right, and, and if, it, if it comes down to it, I, I don't have a problem with a community government... Uh, essentially kicking out a corporate security but and how? saying no we're reclaiming with 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 a with police Wait. with with a with a community based police force if it's if it's i w i would hope that it would be part of a voluntarily funded system uh of a, a police system in a, in a community where the, if the if the new sovereign says hey your corporate headquarters over in that other state don't give you claim to this building in the system here we are reclaiming this then yeah okay I, that should happen. what if Absolutely. what if walmart shows up with more police they're a multi-billion dollar transnational corporation like they could probably afford like a massive army what if they send more people right, well that's 
th that's essentially the system we have today with the state. Wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. You don't get, wait, you don't get to walk out of this one. What happens? Because we have plenty of examples throughout history of people who have tremendous moneyed interest in an area using that wealth to then break down yeah. any forms of resistance because it's more profitable for them to pay police and keep people quiet and subservient than it is for them to acquiesce to the will of the community. Right, and, and and you could point to the example of of the Pinkertons as well, and and there there are plenty of examples of uh, abuse of private security. How is it abuse of but... private security? Wait, because from Walmart's perspective, they're violating the NAP. Walmart, or whatever, whoever owns Walmart, owns those businesses. They paid for them. They paid the wages of everyone there. They paid for renovations. They did everything for this town. And then these town folk get uppity because they don't like the prices, and they try to organize some community police to try and kick them out. With no central state to defer to, Walmart would just send in Pinkertons. They would send in strike breakers. If they start storming the stores, right. they would be legally able to, like, not that there is any law, but, the, like, they would be morally justified in gunning those people down. Now, that's kind of a, you know, sensationalist, unrealistic scenario. It's literally you know happened that, before, as, even with on, the state on. protecting people. Yeah, but you, you know that even in those cases, the, the, the ultimate check is what can you convince a trigger puller to do? And you can, and, and I've, I say this as someone who's been convinced to torture people in Iraq. This has happened for um, centuries. Lords would send knights in to kill peasant villagers if they didn't produce enough grain. The Pinkertons were used to strike break. This has been happening for centuries. Yeah, no, they will do it. Right. People will kill if they're paid right. and told to do so. You know that. Right, and I... Right, and I would rather have the primary system by which that has been achieved, the state, taken down and held more accountable. That's not an answer to my question. You haven't given an argument for how any community could resist the will of a company. It's, it's, it's not going to be perfect, but the, the example you're saying is, is just implausible because it would require no, it's it would been be such happening. a PR nightmare. No, it wouldn't. Wait, where who cares about Walmart, a PR nightmare? Where, where, where have companies in, in, the mo in modern America done down protesters or citizens reclaiming there are companies coca-cola literally funded death squads in latin america to make sure their slaves could continue producing the syrups uh, at an appropriate rate nestle has gotten tens of thousands of african women hooked on formula just so their breast milk dries up and then try to sell it back to them at a premium trust me the american public doesn't give a yeah. fuck nobody gives a shit no, companies can do whatever no, they want oh, here oh, so here Here's where I, I agree with you that, that not giving a fuck is a problem. Like, I don't, I don't buy Coke. You know, I, I do my best. These aren't answers. Consumer. People don't care. If they wanted, Walmart could just buy the news, too. Lord knows they have the money. They don't have to run any stories on how they just gunned down okay, well, 87 I, I, people. I've answered all, okay, so I've answered all your questions, and then you interrupt to say I'm not answering what I'm... Because I'm, I'm your answer is that there's nothing a community could do to, re point. to repel companies. No, so what, what, I, what I'm getting at here is though that all of those problems are going to exist as long as consumers support companies doing bad things as long as voters acquiesce to governments doing bad this has things nothing to do with government them. and you know now your interruptions are just getting tedious man Be because you like, keep so you're it, running off i'm asking like you're yeah. okay then with the communities having no way of repelling um the 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 overreach of businesses they would have no way of doing it there's no evidence to suggest people are going to stop buying from Walmart because they killed people. This has happened plenty of times before. Nobody stopped buying from the from the factories that send Pinkertons to kill strikers. Like, that just doesn't happen. It's just not a thing humans do. Humans will always so, prioritize their all, immediate material yeah, comfort. First of all, most of the... So, if you, would, if you would have allowed me to finish instead of changing the subject five times as I was trying to I'm get this I'm changing the subject? Out. Yeah, there, and now you're erupting again for no reason. So, if there were... If, if you want to look at all of the ills of violence and coercion created by corporations, when you talk, want to talk about the, those direct cases of violence, I'm with you. They're horrendous. They shouldn't happen. As long as consumers are willing to buy from companies and give money to people who are going to use it to do violence, it's going to happen, regardless of what other system exists. What, did you cut out or did you stop talking? Hello? Did I, I cut out? Cut out. No, no, no. Uh, let me just see. Okay, that's all right. I can wait. I'm very patient. I think a short breather would be good, actually. <laughs> uh, right. How are you doing, Tim? All right.
could take uh I'm not trying to dox you or nothing here, but you're in Cali, right? No, actually I'm in Washington now. Oh, okay. Cool. Why do you ask? Uh, oh well I was I was gonna say we should everyone should take a quick breather and I was wishing I could breathe something but I can't in my state, but <laughs> Oh yeah, well we we were we're the epicenter of um of of COVID nineteen, so it's uh, whew, um people are real scared up here, but we do have some of the cleanest air in the country, so we got that going for us. Oh, I wasn't talking about air, but um, so I was actually um kind of curious, like so I I I texted him. I don't know. Oh, it's a weed uh, joke. Okay, I get it. Okay, sorry. All right, I'm here. Oh, <laughs> yes. Uh. So I text him. I don't. I don't know what's uh, going on. Then I'll just wait for that. Um, but um, yeah, I was actually kind of curious here. And if I, you don't mind if I just pick your mind? Well, um, yeah, yeah, go for it. I get well, bored wait. if I'm not talking anyway. Okay. <laughs> uh, so it, it seemed to me uh, like you guys actually. I I wasn't sure. I wanted to get his thoughts on this, but it seemed to me like you're really purely a consequentialist on this is that correct yeah i'm yeah i'm a hard consequentialist hey, I'm not a... can you hear me now oh shit hello yeah i didn't touch anything i just got dropped apparently and it, it happens I? discord shit welcome back so the, the the dramatic conclusion there was if you're going to make the argument from effect about the evils of of corporate corporations against the evils of government you're going to lose every time i'm not saying don't get rid of the evils of corporations but the evils of government are far worse. Well, wait, that, but that's not what we've been talking about here. I'm an anarchist. Like, I'm not going to defend the excesses of the state. My reforms come fundamentally to reform the economic system as it exists, not bolster. Oh, the so power wait, of the you're going to have you're well, wait, you're an anarchist who advocates for coercive taxation. Tell me more. Because as a transitionary period, yeah, I don't think we can just do anarchism today. I think it's you need to bring about certain material processes before we can get there. Like, for example, seizing the means of production. I think you need to implement worker democracy before you can make any meaningful change in that direction. I think that's very important. But we were talking about the fact that in your system, there's literally no way for a community to rise up and resist um, the, the uh, uh, poor behavior of a company. Uh, Not at all. There are two important ways. I mean, you can, you can physically reclaim property and, and you can... Stop doing business with them. Okay, but as we've you're discussed, just, uh, you're, you would just be advocating that this that, that your version of a transitionary state do that. I mean, I guess I, I, maybe now we're coming down to it to a different, you know, fundamental disagreement is that you want to use more systems of, of coercive state to so achieve your your we're, we're pivoting concept again. of anarchy. We're pivoting again. We of were course. talking about your system. Um, so, for one, we've already as we've already described. Um, there is Pivots no... Pivots are natural in a conversation. I'm sorry? Pivots are natural in a conversation. I mean, it's a, it's sometimes. Okay. I, I just... With, with regards to the... Um... With 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 regards to um, like not doing business at these companies, like we know this doesn't happen. We've had centuries, in some cases millennia, of precedent to indicate that when there are coercive elements involved, as there absolutely are when it comes to which goods you purchase from a massive transnational conglomerate, um, stuff like PR doesn't actually affect outcome that much. Everyone knows Nestle is bad. Everyone knows Coca Cola is bad. Everyone knows every company has done some horrible shady shit. Everyone knows. Hey, all the banks currently are all like they're all complicit in um, the horrible shit that they did back in 2008. We still use right. those products, we still use those services. There's not there's no law against starting a new well, bank. I there are my, credit well, unions I, people can I, use an I do my best to use Bitcoin and, and cryptocurrency and barter as much as possible. Right. I, and I that's fine on your part, but people don't do that generally. And and again, right. and credit I'm, unions. I'm saying let's 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 raise everybody up and and, and raise the consciousness. Okay, I'm, I'm arguing as a sociologist that it is a material fact that the bad PR produced by a company is not going to be a deterrent for them to do stuff that increases their profit motive. That's why we have the term banana republic. Same with when governments. The, when, okay, but we're talking about companies right now, and you're so that's so the argument that you would just stop buying from a business that like kills a bunch of people in Milwaukee. That's not really a valid counter argument. That doesn't seem like an effective deterrent. 
effort. And what's more, there's no way a community could ever muster the resources to materially resist a giant company. Maybe some smaller companies being shitty, sure. But if a company like Walmart or Amazon wants your town, the only way you're going to get through that without a state to defer to is through massive amounts of repellent violence. And there's no way they'll ever be able to muster that. And frankly, I don't like the idea of living in a society where every two years we have to have a revolution against Corporation Incorporated um, so we can like take back our town's water supply because they've been dumping like goat feces in it and it's been like giving everyone cancer. I think that having a state, a central authority with a monopoly on violence to, to defer to is actually a very important way of, um, of, of uh, preventing some of the worst excesses of um, corporate behavior. Okay. Are, yeah, are we allowed this, to pivot now? Well, it, I mean, I'd I like it if you address now? that, because it seems like your society is just a feudal one. You can't resist who controls the means of production. You can't resist whoever controls your town. You work or you well, die, I was, I was and you can host it. But you were going to interrupt and call it a pivot, so I wanted to make sure you're okay with me answering the question. Yeah, well, if you address it, I wouldn't call it a pivot, pivot. but I'll, I'll try to hold my tongue. You would. You would anyway. You have. So, yeah, it, it, what, what you're suggesting is that corporate power that only exists because of government would not have you have not described how any of this wouldn't system. take place without a government you can't keep saying that so, why do you keep saying that nothing that i've said you have well, not given me any reason why this if, wouldn't if, happen if, without if, a government i mean if you let me finish the thought you know you, i'm man so okay how would this uh, not be an issue so the corporate power that, that you're saying be, it, it is a threat would not exist without a state backing it up in the first place. And to what extent a localized system of government can back up a corporation is going to be limited to the consent of the people immediately affected by it. So the idea that you would have a, a corporation uh, violating the sovereignty of another country backed up by a government, just it, that would not be a thing. You would have a, a much better check on those abuses happening in the first place. I mean, I'm, I'm with you there that we, we, in the sense that we identify the same problem, but the understanding of it and its relation to the state is fundamentally different here. Okay, so and I think, again, it goes back to your definition of, of coercion and, and focus on, on money and materialism as opposed to ethics. How, wait, wait, wait. I don't think you know what those words mean in this context. Everything that I'm talking about is fundamentally ethical. Materialism is just an analytical framework through which Taxation I analyze ethical is not decisions. Ethical. Okay, no, you're, you're wait, you haven't, you haven't, concept of a coercive you haven't made that state, argument. Definition is not ethical. Okay, you haven't made that argument. Wait, 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 wait. Can you, you explain to me how you can justify? You can, can you explain to me how you can justify your belief that in an ANCAP society there would be no big companies? I didn't say that. Wait, then how would they not be able to do what I described, where they completely own a town and anytime you resist, they just kill you because there's no reason for them not to and there's no central authority to defer to? Because you'd be able to immediately withdraw your consent. Wait, what does that mean? Okay, like, yeah, so it's, it's what, what do you mean withdraw no, your consent? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not promising, hey, I, I'm not promising like, hey, we get rid of the state or, or transition it all to, uh, you know, a voluntary system that, there aren't still going to be bad people occasionally. No, no, no. Your system thing. is broken. It has nothing to do with bad people. You can't answer a simple question. How would you prevent no, companies? No, this is a problem of institutionalized coercion. Wait, how? Okay, what so a company... We should not allow any, con any system of institutionalized coercion. And what that comes down to is conscious consumerism, both as a material consumer and as a voter. So, so you're you saying say, you can boycott well, your you know, way out I'm of warlords. If, as, if, if, if society as a whole, if the world as a whole, is, is going to consent to Coca-Cola sending armies a, a, a against people, then it, it doesn't matter if they consent to Coca-Cola or a government. We have to change the paradigm in both of Wait, those no, things. Wait, no, because the difference well, is the government doesn't just slaughter entire towns. <laughs> I mean, sometimes governments indigenous have never towns. Slaughtered entire, no, what, no, governments have never slaughtered entire towns. Wait, wait, wait. Towns. Okay, wait, wait. Let me, let, me, let me clarify that. What? Domestically, in the kidding? United States of like, America... Really? Wait, 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 wait. You can feign outrage all you want. You can feign outrage all you want. But within the United States of America, how often does the U.S. just send troops in to kill a bunch of strikers? Now, they did no, it back during... Way, they did it in coordination with businesses. Sure. You pivoted, like, either completely way, off of this point. You no, realize that, right? Either way, these... Either way, the violence 
and, and you're, you're not going to win arguments just by interrupting and saying you're, you're wait you just interrupted me when i make one sentence i make like one sentence and you, you say you, you you try to attack me from a, a rhetorical okay, you're making an argument from emotion you're trying to make me feel sorry subject. for you and i don't now let's get back to the actual question which you have again no, not answered I'm you haven't trying, answered I'm, any I'm question trying, so again how I'm, exactly I'm in an ancap society how exactly in an ancap society would companies not be able to do what i described so you can't answer it you you don't there is no answer no, hypothetically they would because hypothetically they would hypothetically they I'm would what? they would would what i'm, I'm not they would, would be able to do that that's bad they would, uh, uh, hi, yes right and i'm not i'm saying what uh, that we have to address that problem with conscious consumerism okay no no, no. that if doesn't no no, no. you can't you can't just give oh, wait wait there is no to... evidence historically that conscious consumerism can resist the overwhelming oligarchical might of corporations it doesn't seem to work you can't advocate for a social system where corporations have effectively infinite power to monopolize industries within local areas and then resist militarily any incursions against them and then say well if people just purchase things more responsibly what if they don't what if walmart controls the media and doesn't publish stories about the bad shit no, it's done so every, nobody knows outside of the town right. what if walmart sure. owns every uh food outlet in that in that uh in that area what are you going to do drive to the next town to get food every time at the end of the day material comfort will always trump people's moral considerations when it comes to making purchases unless you're talking about vegans or whatever but not everyone's a vegan and even they make plenty of irresponsible consumptive choices your society is a feudal one you are advocating for a system where there is no way for the average person can, to resist the totalitarian might of companies that decide to lay claim in their towns and areas there was no out for this there's no conscious consumerism there's no little oh well we can just retract our consent nothing you're arguing for a mad max style feudalist world where warlords operating as corporate benefactors control massive swaths of territory because it's more profitable than submitting to the democratic will of the people who all die conveniently enough to one shot to the head there's no point for them to do anything else and it's happened before we've seen it happen in other countries we've seen it happen in feudal countries we've seen it happen in failed states we've seen it happen in america our corporations going to other countries to do this shit to them because they didn't have a state strong enough to defend themselves against the interests of that corporation states are needed to protect us from the comparably far worse excesses of corporations in a market-driven economy so long as that state is democratic which america for all of its faults and issues and there are many of those is an ostensibly democratic country and I, as much as i am an anarchist i would rather get rid of the capitalism and then get rid of the state than get rid of the state and then attempt to get rid of the exploitation inherent to capitalism Are you done? Yeah, that was, yeah, I'm done. Because that was that was beautiful, very very well spoken. Are you going to respond to any but of it, or again, are you going to tell me about? I've, I believe, I believe I've addressed most of that already. But I will just <laughs> underscore one more point here at the end, which again, I think really is where we differ in our observation of reality. You see the evils of private corporate power today being worse than the evils of the state, and you point to. Uh, various historical atrocities, which I, I don't deny the significance of, but I think you are grossly underestimating the relative violence and harm of governments. I'm not pro all state. Of human history in creating wars and creating democide and creating widespread famine and, and human suffering at a scale that no, even corporate entity with government powers backing it up has ever been able to achieve but i'm not what i'm advocating is and what i'm you you are as a means of transition and you're advocating for what i would describe although you say it's not in your concept of tax a form of coercion and all of the times that we've seen in human history entities with that power is that they have grown out of control and and created the greatest examples of violence in the world today and that if you take away that state power that backs up corporate power and make it subjected to market accountability and the paradigm of society has to change to say we will not in our choices as individuals support violence and coercion with our vote or with our dollars and and those things go hand in hand in the consciousness in terms of social restructuring, if you want to address 
the greatest evil first. I, I don't know how you can see that the, the evils of corporations throughout human history, uh, you know, or even a, a, a drop in the bucket of bloodshed by governments that have killed hundreds of millions of people, literally. I, I don't know if the number's in the billions now, uh, but in, in democide and in war and all the other ways that, that governments have destroyed life. And I think your, your emphasis here is hugely misplaced. I think if you reconsider the data, you would reorganize your priorities. All right. So, I, again, I need to point this out. Um, for one, none of this has anything to do with the fact that I think it's funny you make an appeal to data when there is no data that indicates any of the claims like libertarians or ANCAPs make with regards to the mitigating effect a lack of government is going to have on corporations and the power they exert over others. You've advocated I'm, effectively. I'm not claiming wait, 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 wait. That point. We're, we're, we're jumping. Wait, 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 really quick, really quick. We're, you've advocated effectively for a feudal state. Um, I consider this to be infinitely more regressive and more coercive than the one in which we live today. And I am anti-state. My problem ultimately is not with states or companies fundamentally, but with hierarchy. As an anarchist, I'm concerned when uh, one man lays claim to dominion over another. That's just something that upsets me. I don't think that's right. I think we should all have an equal okay, share I, in the world. But can, can I pivot? If, can I, wait, but can, wait. Can I? Wait, I want to respond to your points. Then you can pivot. Okay. Wait. Just we'll, we'll take turns. Um, so I'm against hierarchy fundamentally. Right now, our government is in to an extent. Um, beholden to the interests of the people. It is a democracy. Now, is it a perfect one? No, God, no, please. I criticize the U.S. all the time. But I think a lot of people who act as though we don't live in a democracy forget just how bad governments were before we even pretended to have one. And what's more, many of the right. atrocities committed by government are usually done hand-in-hand -hand with corporations. For example, the genocide of the Native Americans was done hand-in-hand -hand with the railroad companies right. and with other right. uh, corporations that managed... Interests. Right, yes. right, right. We, they work together. And the reason for that isn't because government is super extra bad or because corporations are super extra bad. The reason is anytime you have a system which puts one man over another, which gives undue power to one over another, you are creating a system with the potential for tremendous exploitation and abuse. And as it stands right now for all the faults of government, its existence does allow for things like workplace safety laws, OSHA, the ability to sue businesses for expropriating your wages or for committing wage theft, the ability to sue um, uh, people for insult or trading, the ability to call the cops if Walmart is sending their armed goons to your house to murder you because you wrote an article about them that said mean stuff. Um, fundamentally, the government does act as a counterbalance to corporate force, and that's because they have a mutually beneficial relationship. There are things both provides for the other, and these are stipulations that are made so we can live in a civilized society. And an approach towards ameliorating this difference cannot be as blith and as simplistic and as un compromising as just abolishing the federal government and then letting corporations do whatever. We have to put the hands and the power in the hands of the people first and then we can make moves forward. So, to this idea of localization, I want to go back to that because mm -hmm. you think that you're more likely to get what you want by reforming a centralized coercive system than getting it at the community level and showing some proof of concept why you're using a lot of loaded language there what exactly do you mean by reinforcing a fundamentally coercive system do you have a problem the with the government if it's perfectly government, democratic well i would say it's only democratic if it's voluntary if it's voluntary you have to have the right to secede on an individual or community basis and create new systems based so, on whatever you want. What if, what if everyone voted that they would rather live in an America where people can't secede? Because it turns out that leads to a lot of chaos and confusion and infighting. I don't think the perspective of potential negative outcomes justifies an unethical coercive action. So if you say that How is it I'm going to force you to be it. part no, because if, if I'm in the minority and I didn't vote for it and I say I don't want to be part of that, and I'm going to go be independent and, and I, I don't want to be in your system, you're going to force me to be a part of it. So you think you should be able to murder if you want to? I never said that. Well, what if you, you believe that, that the what if you believe that the state imposed restriction on murdering other people on your natural right to deprive others of their lives uh, is an imposition that you don't agree with? So you should be able to, as like a sovereign citizen, refute that law and kill I, people I, if you want. I would. I I reject the premise of your question. You don't have a right to kill other people. That's absurd. Well, why? Wait, why not? 
because people own themselves. You as an individual human being Says who? own yourself. I, 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 that's the state of the natural, well, if you define ownership as actual control, then the, the, the act of being an independent consciousness in your own physical body is is in and of itself a state of ownership. Wait, well, says Sue. What if the what if the people of the government vote that that's actually not says, the case? Says, says philosophy. Says my perspective. Says okay, my so beliefs. your perspective. All right. Well, what it's if totally... other people disagree? If we're deferring to democracy here, what if they believe that's not the case? What if they believe? I'm not defer. Hold on. Are you you can defer to democracy to majority rule. I do not. If you define it as rule by the people or voluntarism, sure. But if you're defining democracy is majority gets to force their will in the minority no i, I disagree i'm not wait for that. so then what then what rules could a democracy ever apply other than to those who voted yes for it should laws only apply to people who agree with those laws so a democracy uh, there, there are two definitions and and i would just ask you to say what you're using here because democracy by the the meaning of the word as is often used in flowery idealistic rhetoric is rule by the people but as an actual system of government, it's some concept of majority rule, whether it's by decentralized republic or representative democracy, what have you. It's, it's ruled by the majority gets to force their will on the minority without their consent. So what is a voluntarily created law, then? If you agree, then, that if a government is democratic in the sense that it represents the will of the people, that it's a voluntary system. What if they collectively right. then say, wow, all these uh, all these sovereign citizens um, declaring their houses exempt from national judi um, uh, adjudication and uh, pointing guns out of their window is making me uncomfortable. I don't think people should be able to do that. What, what do you do then? I don't think you should be able to violate someone else's right to live how they want because it makes you uncomfortable. What if a person likes like raping people? That's how they want to live. It makes me uncomfortable. Why do I get to stop that? Yeah. Well, you get to stop it because it's a violation of someone else's rights. It's a crime. What if that person not who's because being... it makes you you don't not because it makes you uncomfortable. What if that person who's being raped? I don't get to raped? stop you from punching me because the idea makes me uncomfortable. I get to stop you because you're violating another human's self ownership, the the integrity of their body and their person. You are committing a real crime. What if the person who's being raped is in that sovereign citizen's house that has exempted themselves from the rule of the United States? What if you find out that most of the sovereign citizens who are declaring themselves exempt are actually just like abusive dads who want to be able to rape their children without the cops coming for them? What do you do then? After all, crimes only exist in a system with laws. If they're not part of the United States, they're just exempting themselves. No, crime, crime, crimes exist under the concept of natural law, and I would support people going in and forcibly interfering in the in those situations and stopping that. You're okay with imperialism as long Absolutely. as you did. Wait. So I reject this idea of a natural law. Laws have to be codified for them to be I enforced. I never said imperialism. I never said imperialism. Wait, you're talking. Like you wait, you're talking about the state interfering with the with the the behavior. I didn't say of the an... state. No. Wait, then who well, would go was... in? Well, it would be a. It, would, it could be a, a private security. It could be a community organization. If you want to call it the state, if it's a local community force uh, that, that that functions as a police force, then yeah, sure. So how exactly are you a sovereign citizen if you're still subject to the laws of the government you just seceded from? It's not subject to the laws of the government. Government doesn't say you can't rape people. Natural no, the government laws actually does say people. that. No, no, natural law. No, I promise right, you, right. before government, people were raping each other all the time and nobody was getting arrested for it. Right. So, so, so the uh, government, it's, no, but it's a, it's an actual viol, it's an ethical violation. I have no problem with being held accountable for that, regardless of what words a government writes on paper, rape is rape, it's wrong. Wait, it, doesn't, wait, like, it wasn't wrong forever. Who decided wrong? it was wrong? Logic. Wait, reason. no, no, wait, wait, you can't you appeal to natural that, ethics. Yes, yes, yes. Logic and reason tell you that because you own yourself, it is unethical to violate that self-ownership. No, but wait, that's your pr ethical principle. Nobody else, well, not everyone else believes that. Yeah, and I'm saying more people should have ethical principles. I think the world Wait, we do have ethical place. principles, just not yours. Examine. Well, yours, you, you have abandoned the concept of respect for private property or self-ownership 
as an ethical principle in your advocacy for a transitionary system that is coercive by twisting the definition of taxation. I don't think it's coercive. Wait, wait, wait. We keep we keep pivoting. I don't know why you keep jumping to the fact that I believe in a transitionary state on the way to anarchism. That has nothing to do with this conversation. What I'm trying to get, what I'm trying to like pull from you is that what if ultimate? See, I'm a consequentialist. I believe in utilitarianism. To me, whatever society hurts people is a bad one, and if it helps people, it's a good one. I don't care about like principle ideals or first order beliefs. I just okay. care about the outcomes. I'm so a, what I, if it is decided? I'm an ethicist. I believe in ethics and principles. Okay, that's I don't that's believe fine. that I can judge what's good. I don't believe that I have the ability to judge for everybody else or to be a central planner. Okay, you well, seem to have that conceit. Well, there, well, no. I mean, everyone has their own beliefs as to what's right or wrong. This is what I come at it with. There are people who would argue, in fact, that rape is not necessarily unethical. Up until very so recently, spouse wait. Up until recently, spousal rape wasn't illegal in many parts of the country, and many people didn't believe it was rape because by act of marrying a man, you are submitting yourself at all times to him. So obviously, there isn't like a natural law we can defer to here. People have had different ideas on what is or is not acceptable for pretty long periods of time. Now, with that being said, right. And it's, if, it's getting better. It's getting better over time. I way. agree with that. Yeah, I, no, I, I agree with that. Yeah, but it's what Professor if Professor Steven Pinker? I don't like Steven Pinker, but I do agree things are generally getting better with regard to our ethical considerations. I love Steven Pinker. What if I, I don't love him personally, but I, lo I love uh, the, the the crux of his work. I'm very pro gay rights, so even if you violence. did, it wouldn't bother me. But here's my question, and I'm, this is what I'm trying to get out of you: What if it was decided by the people who lived in a country and who voluntarily voted for it or whatever, um, and like 98% of them agreed individuals should not be able to secede from the union because it ends up creating bad outcomes because the people who do this tend to end up being really shady individuals who try to use it to get away with like bad shit in their house um where the police can't touch them right so i think i've addressed this before but you've inspired slightly different wording for me here when you say bad outcomes does it justify doing something unethical forcing someone into a coercive system i i say no and what this comes down to is again what you pointed out is our fundamental difference i believe in principles you you are a consequentialist Wait, you're consequentialists believe in principles. End, right, in a difference. Well, you just, okay. The way you said it. The, yeah, the ends do justify the means. Yeah, absolutely. I'll bite that yes, bullet in anything. Yeah, yeah, see, right. No, the ends do not justify the means. Okay, but we have different not. ethical principles, but I'm asking you a basic question on right. your values. Okay. I'm not asking you for, for you to conform to mine. I'm asking you, what would you do in a country where people voluntarily voted overwhelmingly in favor of preventing people from, from uh, um, acting as sovereign citizens and declaring their own homes exempt from federal governance? What would I do? Yeah, what would you do if like the vast majority of Americans in, a, in an ethical democracy, a non-coercive you know coercive one, if they all voted in favor of that, of keeping people from seceding? Well, then it would be coercive because you're coercing people into the system. But I'm doing what I'm doing now. Like you say, what would I do? Like, well, I, I bought 10 acres that's pretty remote where I'm left alone as, as much as possible. And I can, at least by government, and I can have beautiful, vibrant, consensual relations out here. And excuse me, minimize the impact of uh, non-consensual relationships in my so life. So fundamentally, that's, your that's premise what I would do. is a democracy. I would, I would assert Oh, sorry. Yeah, continue. No, no, I would just, I would assert my rights as, as best I can, as I'm doing now. I think that's what everybody should do. And you have a right to not submit to taxation. If you don't like what your money is being spent on, you have a right to withhold it. Then, say, no, then you shouldn't be, be able to walk system. on roads or use any public utilities or benefit from public education, right? Right, right, right. In, in, in a sense that if, no, in, in a hypothetical sense, you're right. In a practical sense, no, because you've already paid into that and there needs to be some uh, practical trans transitionary system and most people oh wait you can do wait you wait you can't do that you can't defer to pragmatism are you telling me all the taxpayers who are okay paying their taxes have these leeches who think they can just exempt themselves from taxation getting to use their roads their sidewalks their institutions well, yeah yeah oh no but that's people aren't people that's not a realistic mentality most people think you know hey if i live in this town and I pay taxes in my town, and my town builds infrastructure with this. When tourists come, I want them to be able to drive on our roads. I want tourists and friends and visitors and neighbors. We want to be good, good hosts. That's generally how but human they pay beings taxes. are. They, they we pay, want, we um, want to share. But they right. pay, um, they pay um, uh, sales tax. Um, okay, so...
I, I don't, so we're, we're operating like in a weird, it's weird that you would appeal to pragmatism when you just like shit talked me for being consequentialist. You seem to think it's like exploitative to have to pay taxes, but it's not exploitative for people to be able to declare themselves exempt to taxes, but still use the benefits of other people's taxes, which is really strange to me. Taurus bring money in in other ways. Here's my killer question for you, okay? What would you do if we had an America that was voluntary democracy, okay? And you can secede, mm -hmm. you are allowed to secede. However, mm -hmm. not only are you allowed to benefit from any of the products of other people's taxation, you have to use your own infrastructure, your own utilities. Uh, there'd be like a, like a card carrying thing you'd have to have to be able to benefit from using like tax, like uh, taxpayer funded stuff. But businesses would not hire you because um, the government um, unfavorably taxes businesses that hire people who declare themselves sovereign citizens because it ends up making the government less money. So it's actually the corporations right. who won't take you if you declare yourself a sovereign citizen. Is that a voluntary society? I can't answer. I'm dead. I'm sorry. You killed me. Okay, so I, I would try to let me let me see if I can answer that in practical terms here, because that's that's kind of like already what I've done. If if I declared myself sovereign and I had a, a passport for the Garden of Freedom, my my independent nation here, would I be able to visit the rest of America like a tourist? Um, I mean, tourists bring money in ways that you don't. Uh, you're sapping the system in a way that a tourist doesn't as well. Um, tourists are generally like well, a net economic well, no, gain like, to a country. Well, no, no, okay, hold on, okay. As a visitor, like, am I able to come in and do business? Like, if I'm building domes on my own property, am I, am I allowed to uh, drive off of, uh, into the United States from my sovereign land and, and sell my goods? Am what? I allowed no. to engage you... in commerce? No. Why would you be able to? You've exempted yourself from that. Now, you can get another person to take your goods to market if you want to, but why would the taxpayers oh, okay. allow you to walk on roads they paid for? Because you're too greedy to pay into a system that benefits everyone. I, I don't think that's realistic, because that's not how it works today. People are welcoming of, of anybody who, who wants to engage in good faith and observe the natural law and, and, and the standards Any, of their community. Anyone who exempts themselves from taxes would be despised in a democratic society. Like you would be the scum of the earth. Everyone else is pe like spending a portion of their hard earned money on trying to keep the basic foundational elements of society up. And you've just decided you're above all of that. And you're just going to ex like take advantage of everyone else's work while you get to keep your full paycheck. You people like you would be like reviled. Um, you, you would be like the scum of the earth. At least tourists pay taxes in their home country, too, and that pays dividends globally now that we have a globalized economy. But you wouldn't be paying taxes to anybody. You would just be sitting in your own house, completely exigent from society, beholden to no one, but no one is beholden to you. And if that's a world that well, you no, think so is voluntary... In, in that, no, 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 hold on. So in that sense, in that, sense that person should be judged. So let's say, let's say we have a, a generally voluntary government where people all contribute to infrastructure and charity that's run by government. And there's there's one asshole on the side of town who just wants to to be independent on his on his own property and run his business without paying taxes and and doesn't want to you know contribute materialistically other than in commerce. Then yeah, that guy should be looked at, and you know they still want to use all the infrastructure, uh, you know, they, they, and they should be looked at disfavorably, and and people should generally you know take their business elsewhere if that's the case. But if that if that money that's being taken it's not really voluntary it's being used to fund war it's being used to fund the drug war and the, the prison industrial complex then i'd say that person opting out is an ethical champion for not materially supporting the, the, this grossly unethical system now if they have a social standard where the government is half and half right like we have today the government does half good things with our money and half really fucking evil things with our money if someone opts out from, if, if it's simple as that, and I opt out and say, you know what, I'm going to do my best to stop paying taxes, but since, you know, everybody else is chipping in this 50% to do good stuff, you know, I'm going to make sure that on my own, you know, I'm, I'm living up to, to that social standard and, and I'm, uh, you know, I'm going to work with the food bank in my community. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to start a charity or I'm going to, I'm going to give blood or I'm going to, you know, I'm, I'm going to do all these other things. Yeah, I think I think that that standard of contribution should be upheld, and that people who uh, contribute more should be held in higher regard, and, and people who don't contribute, uh, you, you know, should be held in lower regard. All right, then wait, then we agree. Then why don't we just keep the state, work on making it more democratic, and make sure that the laws it puts out are representative of the will of the population? Because, well, I am. 
I am then. And, and the crux of that is how do you make it voluntary? How Wait, do you no, make you it don't. Consensual? You want to abolish I the federal consent. government. Right. And keep state governments and then county governments and then city governments and then voluntary community based governments. That's how you transition to, to a voluntary system that's ethical, where government becomes is because power corrupts and, and the centralization of, of government is a unique kind of power. If you keep creates state, a unique kind of separation from the will of the people, if you, uh, the if more you keep centralized state governments, the you government just have is, a confederacy. The more, right. Hold on. Now, the more disparate. Uh, communities are forced under a centralized government. The more corrupt, the less accountable, and the more of a one-size-fits-all solution is going to be forced on everybody. With power localized, decentralized, you have customization of government systems to the communities that they're supposed to be. But serving. then you just. But then you're they're not more arguing. They're transparent because there are less layers of bureaucracy. They're more accountable because you can have a system where the will of the people is immediately connected to that government system. Okay. So you're not advocating for an ANCAP society. You're, ad you're advocating for an increase in the number of states 50 times. If we get rid of the federal government and just defer everything to state government authority, we're just talking about 50 separate states that work together in a no, loose I'm, confederacy. No what, I'm, no, what I'm talking about is the right, the individual right to secede being respected. And for, the, for individuals that all you care to about? come together, for individuals to come together and form new communities that provide better outcomes for themselves without forcing them into a non-consensual relationship. Oh, you, with keep, you keep using government. these really loaded ethical terms, but there is no evidence to suggest that the absence of yes, a federal government would allow people more opportunity to, um, to to improve their lives. The last time we had a state's oh, rights no. binge states in this, be... the last time we had a state's rights binge <clears throat> in this country, it was because they oh. wanted to preserve slavery. That was the last time the states felt so strongly about an issue that they wanted to um, that they wanted to hop off and uh, and exert their own will. Um, like that's like, actually not true. That's, that's not true on so many levels. Wait, there, there in what way am I wrong? There, there are multiple modern independence movements in, in many states. Hawaii. There are no, is, is no, 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 come on. Compared to the Confederacy, the there are no time. independent states movements, even California, close. California, no. California now has Cal Exit. There's independent California movement. Nobody takes these seriously. The state of Jefferson. Nobody takes um, these seriously. So Nobody Real takes quick, these seriously. Well, because they're, they're in the early stages. Um, they haven't gotten to the point. They're not going to happen. Adam, 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 hold on one second. I just want to point out, because I know both of you guys got a tight time limit. Oh, and, uh, we, yes. You know, we got like seven minutes yeah. left on here. Thank um, you. So just want to give you guys a heads up so, like, you, know, you guys can wrap it up without, Yeah, let's uh, go. You know, yeah, yeah. No, that's great. Thank you, Tim. Yeah. You want to go to a closer, Bosh? Yeah. Do you want to, do you want to go at first and, or, or should I? Yeah. I, yeah, I, I'll give you the last word, man, because this has been a lot of fun, and I appreciate this kind of conversation. Yeah. Um, I get to sit back in my rocking chair. I don't have to, you know, do my hair or anything like that or, or look into a camera and, you know, hey, me make too, buddy. I've, facial expressions. I just got my hair so, up in a ponytail, yeah. too. <laughs> so th this, this is, you know, a, a different kind of conversation. I, I really genuinely appreciate this. I think a lot of people coming at, what you and I are coming at intellectually have to answer a lot of these questions. I, I think I've gone through a lot of the processes that, that you've gone through in, 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 the, in at least what I understand from this conversation and, and what I've read and seen of your work in the past is that, that, that you've gone through identifying, uh, you know, with, with different ideologies. And I think we're both really motivated to look at the big picture and answer big questions about social organization. And I think more conversations like this should be happening. I think this is this is really cool. I'm really, I, you know, I, I kind of wish we could do this in person. Really, the ideal format would be you and me at, at a table, you know, with a camera, video, where, where we're having the conversation directly and get all the nonverbal everything as, as part of it. But I, I think the the core distinctions have come out here in a fun and, and relatively friendly, respectful way where we see the difference between, you know, what I present as an ethical uh, system first, you know, or, or putting ethics and principles first, as opposed to uh, the the you know argument from outcomes that that Vosh puts out here. And uh, you know, I, I I think this has been a great way for anybody listening to decide for themselves and, and see what they come down on. I'm just glad that uh, Tim you, that, that you put this together, and for everybody who's tuned in and listening, that that they're a part of this and they're considering their worldview at a deeper level. And I would just say, please, you know, keep asking hard questions, keep challenging yourself 
and keep developing a, a better worldview by having some role in this conversation, whether it's listening into debates like this or reading, you know, deep intellectual thinkers. Uh, my website, speaking of which, uh, my website is thefreedomline.com. You can get my book there for free in every digital format. You can find uh, my, my libertarian presidential campaign through there, thefreedomline.com. And, and gentlemen, to both of you, thank you very much for making this happen. Yeah, and um, <clears throat> I'll take it away. Um, thank you. I really appreciate it. Um, obviously, things always get heated during discussions, but I tremendously enjoy conversations like these. I find them a lot more fun and interesting than having protracted conversations with institutionalists like neoliberals who are only interested in arguing like the the blandest and and most committee like approved uh, you know positions. Um, so that's good. And I, I mean, I took a look at your work prior to. Um, prior to speaking with you as well, um, which I think is fairly, you know, reasonable uh, prereq. And um, I honestly, I really, as much as I disagree, I think, with some of your broader policy prescriptions and some of your broader ideas, um, I really do respect a lot of the work that you do. Um, I can see very clearly, I mean, you've been an active advocate against the um, Iraq war, uh, a pro-free speech advocate. And what I think is most important to me, most of the libertarians that I've argued with are just Nazis who are dog whistling. This seems to happen every time I talk with one of them. Every single time I begin with with them arguing that like businesses are impeding corporations and I end with like hearing about how co capitalism would be good if it weren't for the neoliberal Jewish, uh, you know, conglomerate suppressing the white man. But you don't. You, you actually <laughs> believe what you talk yeah. about. I like from everything that I've seen from you all across the board, you consistently believe in the things that you actually advocate for. And while I'm not saying that not being a Nazi is a high bar to cross, I do think that being that intellectually <laughs> and ideologically consistent is a very good thing. And I respect it a lot. I thank also you. respect you putting your thank work you. out for free, the book that you've done. So thank you very much for speaking to me. I really do appreciate it. And um, I, I wish you luck in your run. Appreciate that. All right. All right. Yeah. Thanks. Beautiful. guys. Really Really appreciate you guys coming on. Uh, this has been fun. Um, you know, obviously covered a lot here. Um, always love having you guys on. Have had both of you guys on a few times, and it's always been great. Uh, just to make sure I don't miss anything here, um, I've got your YouTube channels and the Freedom Line uh, for uh, Adam. Vosh, uh, are you on D Live now? No, I'm happy to say that I've gotten back to YouTube. The copyright strike issue I had. Yeah, spe okay. Speaking of uh, speaking of uh, unethical appropriation. Of, uh, speaking of an unethical uh, union of business and uh, state interests, let me tell you. Uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm back on. I'm back on YouTube. Thankfully, um, just Vosh. Okay, so if anyone is interested, uh, if you guys aren't familiar with these guys, um, I'm gonna have their YouTube channels uh, up in announcements. You can go check them out. Uh, please do actually. Um, Obviously, you know, both great guys. Really appreciate you guys coming on. Uh, always a pleasure. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day, both of you. Kokesh, Tim. Peace and love, y'all. You too, guys. <sighs> nice. I'm actually really happy with how I handled that. Um, let's do post-debate discussion now. Um... I'm actually really, really happy with how I handled that. I feel like I did a really, really, really good job rhetorically. Let me just change the title there. Yeah, I that, people have been asking me to do an ANCAP debate for a while. I'm glad this is the first chance that we got with a libertarian presidential candidate rather than some rando from Discord. I feel like he's fairly prominent in his in his axes, and I feel like I did a really, really, really good job addressing his principles there. Um, I mean, like, I hate everything he advocates for, but I do fundamentally think that he's a decent person. Um, it really does, it, it does seem like he actually has, like, strong, consistent principles um, that, that he holds to. And even though those principles are dumb, um, I, I respect that a fuckload more than a slippery fucking Nazi. Like, every time I hit them, they're like, oh, well, actually, you know, I, I prefer this... Uh, infinitely. Um, I actually, I need to pee super quick. Um, so I'm going to be right back. Okay. Uh, just give me a second. All right. You know, I drink coffee before stream. I was super tired this time. Fucking donate. I'll get, I'll get right back to you guys. Okay. I'll get right back. 